<laughs> okay, this is old Cam. And this is not a spring chicken. Today we're going to be talking about the Emmys, which are coming up. Yeah, and we're going to be, <laughs> this time we're going to be doing it a little bit different. We're going to be splitting the thing into sections rather than doing one whole long thing talking about the actors and actresses and the TV shows and all of this stuff. So, so what we're talking about are, are Emmys 2011 and what we're going to focus on today for part one are the actors and actresses. Yeah, we will give you a piece of information that we actually didn't know that the uh, the, uh, the segments are, are evaluated by 50 to 75 actors who judge each category are watching DVDs at their home. Is what it means. Wait, well that, that's kind of unusual because we've been seeing some of the Emmy screenings. We've been seeing the screeners where the place is <laughs> filled full of people. I also got a thing about you know uh, they're running screenings. They're running screenings right now. Uh, what it amounts to is they're trying to get the people that know the people that are. Uh, I, I'm assuming what I, I was told that basically they they don't allow you to know who it is that's actually viewing the videos. They pick like at random and send them the videos. Mm -hmm. Because, of course, if you knew who was going to be voting, then yeah. you would lobby them, right? Which is why they're inviting all these Emmy members to these special screenings, mm -hmm. you know, which they're not giving them anything. You're getting popcorn and, and soda pop. Sometimes. Sometimes. <laughs> you know, if you're lucky. We actually managed to get into one of the screenings where we got popcorn and soda pop. But, uh, so they're not buying votes, but they figure if you get, uh, if they come to a screening, you can influence them by seeing the thing with a whole bunch of people. Well, you know, part of it is you, you, you're in an audience, right, with a bunch of people from the industry that are watching the movie yep. or the, the, the TV show, and then there's a Q&A afterwards, which I've always, I've always loved the insight, you know, from the industry and stuff, where people are asking them questions from the audience about how they did the role or what they did or what led up to it, and, yeah. you know, how long the days were, you know, how well, they did certain things. I mean, big, you don't get this normally, otherwise you just see the show. It's a big deal because for the most part, the press was not allowed to those screenings. But we're sort of, we're the quasi people because we're also, we're also news directors, so. And we also don't, we also don't report on scandal stuff, so. We have no history of reporting scandals, and we never will. Because that's Actually, not, it's so, not the kind of news we no, do. So we get, we do get invited. We also, if we sit down to dinner, with an executive, they feel free to talk while we're there. They talk business, and we never, uh, you know, we put everything underneath the table and we eat. I mean, we talk about, you know, um, you know, like sometimes they'll ask us questions because we do have great big press on our things. So we do stand out as somebody thinks they'll ask us questions, we'll answer it because we're trying to get honest answers. But um, but what do we got here? We've got the lead uh, lead actor in a drama. Okay, some of these are kind of predictable because if you've been following the Emmys. Um, some of these actors um, you would expect because, for example, Boardwalk Empire has received a lot of nominations. So B Steve Buscemi from Boardwalk Empire, and the episode was Return to Normalcy. Yeah, here, okay, and everybody knows it's going to be Steve Buscemi. Right off the bat, we know it is Steve Buscemi because he's winning all of the awards except for the TCA. Except for the TCA? Yeah, okay. that's the guy that comes next. Okay, Kyle Chan. Kyle Chandler did the TCA? The, his Friday Night Lights won. Oh, the episode was always. Actually, Kyle Chandler, I'm trying to think of what he's... Yeah, but see, he's, 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 he's not been only, around for a while. He's been more of a character actor. Oh, he did that. He also did the series where he got the news like the day before. You know, but he's also done a, a, on some of this girl soap type thing. But the, mm. the problem I've was, I've always enjoyed watching Kyle Chandler. But that. Friday Night Lights is a show that's not hasn't even wasn't even on the air. Basically, it was canceled by NBC. Oh. NBC had a contract that said they had to fulfill enough episodes to get into syndication. So I think like Direct TV picked it up and they run it on Direct TV, which means nobody saw it. That was one of the ones that they canceled and then they brought back because the audience was. Yeah, was but they didn't bring it on the on over the air. They brought it over on a like I said, Direct TV, which has their own little channel, which nobody really watches right. because you can't. Nobody can see it if you don't have Direct TV. But see, here's part of it is is a lot of people don't realize. Um, I mean, if you're in the industry, you would is that when they vote on these people, they submit an episode mm -hmm. um, for what they think is a good. Um, that, how should we say? It's a good episode of representation of what they did in the show, yeah. where it shows them off. 
And so that's the only one they see. They may not have seen that show on a regular basis, nor do they see all of the other episodes. Yeah, and then we got Michael C. Hall, Dexter, not a chance in this world. John Hamm, Mad Men. Who they, they like Mad Men. Okay, we've actually seen John Hamm. John Hamm, we actually saw him the other day waiting for his wife at a beach, you know, doing the, doing the husband bit, just waiting there with the, her, you know, like all, if you're married, you know what it is, you mm -hmm. sit there with the purse, waiting for the wife to get done. Was that John Hamm? That was John Hamm. Uh, Hugh Laurie from House. No uh, chance whatsoever. I know, but they like Hugh Laurie from House. Yeah, but they, they, it's, they said it doesn't make any difference because Steve Buscemi won the Golden Globe. I know, and Timothy Oliphant from Justified. Which has no reason for being there except the fact that I mean, Timothy kind of, Oliphant. You know, part of it is I do like Timothy Oliphant as an actor. He usually plays a bad guy. He almost kind of reminds me of um, Josh Duhamel. Yeah. You know, he kind of has that, that similar look. But he, I, I actually, I thought he, you know, I, 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 him growing old has not done him a favor. It's made him more of a character actor, but mm -hmm. look at him in Die Hard, the last Die Hard movie. He was good at last Die Hard. He was far better looking and more, you know, but he, he grew older. And sometimes growing old is it's good for you in one way, but it's not good in another. It's not going to get him an Emmy. He's a supporting actor in a leading actor role. Mm -hmm. But uh, Actually, I think of him like Josh G. Hamill plays the good guy, Timothy Olsen is similar look and plays the bad guy. <laughs> I know, but it's basically it's odds on from what I understand is Steve Buscemi because he's been winning all of them except for the TV. We didn't even get through the stuff. rest of the list and you thought he would win that one. Well, yeah, and then we got this one is more of a, you know, a lead actress for drama. We got Kathy Bates, Harry's Law, which I've never seen Harry's Law. I've never seen that. Connie Britton from Friday Night Lights. No chance whatsoever again either. Then this one I know who's going to win. This is between the two bottom ones. So. Okay, Muriel Enos from The Killing. Uh, Mariska Hargitay from Law and Order. And, and no, Juliana Margulies from Margolis The Good Wife. and Elizabeth Moss from The Mad Men. It's between Margolis and Moss. You know what? They always seem to like Juliana Mar Margulies or. Yeah. They uh, basically, they're uh, basically what happened uh, last year. Margonis lost to Kira Sedgwick, who this year is an. She's not even nominated. Because they didn't have any new episodes last oh, year. Oh, that's a good reason why. They uh, here, okay. They canceled the show and then decided to bring it back for one more year. But the problem was, their the ratings are now down because they dropped it for a year, folks. Ah. So, but they figure Margolis was owed it. So, but so they you also, think she'll get it because she didn't get it last year? Okay, but here was, is the. Um, uh, they said the problem is is that the producer of um, of uh, was it, uh, it, 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 it to watch out for Moss because Elizabeth Moss with this role from Mad written, Men from Mad Men the role was written by the script was written by David E Kelly who's had, who's got thirty four wins yeah David yeah the yeah, for his writing writer, his, his writing has well. produced thirty four winners and That's he wrote the good. episode so. They said oh. the favor. They said it's it's it. Moss uh, Margolis is owed it, but Moss could win it because of the track record of Kelly. Oh, interesting. And here's one though. Um, supporting, supporting actor, actor for the, drama. A man of a certain age, Andre Bauer. We saw that. We saw the Emmy nominated thing that he was in, mm -hmm. and basically it was all him that episode. Really. That truly, that truly was. Yeah. Um, um, Josh Charles from The Good Wife. Yeah, I think that's the wimpy. Al Alan Cumming from The Good, good Wife. Good Wife. He's a, yeah, he's not a wimpy. And Peter Drinkies from Game of Thrones. Here's a good, here's another problem. The TCA loves Game of Thrones. They really do. Well, you know, Comic Con loves Game of Thrones too. Everybody loves Game of Thrones, and it basically they wanted to go on. Here's a problem. You know, they they killed off Sean Bean because Sean Bean wants to be. Um, James Bond, right? And they're trying to figure out how to get Sean Bean back because they discovered he's a central character. He's what holds Game he's, of Thrones. There was no intentions of making it. There was no intention of picking it up for two to three more years, and they decided to do it. So now they need Sean Bean, folks. <laughs> so, but uh, but Walter uh, Walter Scoggins, Jeff Scoggins, Scoggins and John Slattery, Mad Men. Now they um, they 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 think it's uh, what was it? Uh, um, the, you know, the Game of Thrones is a, because it's a small character, they're pushing him Peter as Dinklage. a favorite. Uh, you know, uh, Peter, you know Peter, Peter Dinklage, he's got, a, he's got a lot of fans out there. Yeah, you know, he's basically you know, pushing him because he's the oddball. All, all these other guys are, you know, supporting actors. We're talking, these are big, big impressive you, men. You know, part of it is um, from The Good Wife. 
It's like, I, I really do like Alan Cumming in that role. He does a really good job. Well, Alan Cummings is a, they don't <laughs> like Alan Cumming. You know why I like, don't like Alan Cumming? Because he, he, he redid the um, cabaret on Broadway. And they uh, they uh, they did a thing which he regretted. He he said, "Well, did you did you see any of the things that uh, Joel Gray know?" And he said, "No, no, I I paid no attention to what a minor league actor would do." Ooh, was not a bright thing to say That's not wrong. to a guy whose father was one of the icons of the business, who himself was a Tony and Academy Award winner, an Emmy winner, icon. Yeah, but it's of the not business. like they see all of that. Uh, yeah, they might remember. They it. Uh, basically they got around, you know, about the minor. Basically, he didn't actually say minor league. It was sort of like Bush, what? Bush league actor. Oh, which means that you don't even belong on the same stage with me. Oh, that basically put Cummings' career in a sort oh, of. Oh, that's why he was kind of on. You had didn't see him at all for a while. Yeah. Yeah, you know, it see, part not, of it is, is it's really kind of a small you know, industry. Sometimes. You know, Joel Gray, father of Jennifer Gray, you know, whose father was Mickey Cass, and who was Joel Yule's brother, who happens to be the brother of Mickey Rooney. That's Mickey Rooney's nephew they're talking about, you know. <laughs> You know, and we're talking. You can tell where Hollywood goes. Yeah, they tend to stick around their icons. Okay, so Peter Dinklage, okay, favorite. Not only because it's a cult movie. Yeah, but they, uh, it's basically taken, uh, uh, for a funny thing is that thro uh, this mo this uh, Game of Thrones is taking everything at the moment. You see, the trick is, they said, it's peaking at the right well, moment. Well, you know, it's like, I did not realize what a big deal that was. You know, it was huge at Comic-Con. It's huge everywhere. I mean, they, they TCA named it's it. Like, as the, they named it. <laughs>